Good to have you today. Uh, let's start. We're here at the AFR 100 Second Annual Partners Meeting here in Niger. Can you talk about um, the context of Africa in terms of the global restoration agenda and why it figures so prominently? Sure. In Africa, 65% of all land is degraded. And when land becomes degraded to a certain extent, people have to leave. You cannot live there anymore. You cannot make a living off the land. And therefore, we have a large problem within Africa with migration. People have to migrate to urban areas. They have to leave um, their social networks behind. They are sometimes migrate to other countries. Restoring that degraded land is of paramount importance for food security, for water security, for peace and stability in the region. And in Africa in particular, because there are large areas, the whole Sahel area, that are very vulnerable to climate change. You were recently appointed as chair of the Global Partnership on Forest and Landscape Restoration. Can you tell us what your role entails and a bit more about this partnership? The Global Partnership on Forest and Landscape Restoration has at the moment uh, 27 members, uh, soon hopefully a few more, and they are mostly the international organizations, think tanks, NGOs that are involved in this space. So it's the World Bank, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, ICN, World Resource Institute, uh, etc. What we try to do is behind the scenes of all these public commitments and these restoration initiatives to coordinate, that we um, move in the same direction, that we don't overlap, that we use resources efficiently, and to ensure we keep a good track of our progress. So we are the body that behind the scenes coordinates the, the global restoration movement. Okay. And why was it important for you uh, to be present at the AFR 100 here today in Miami? Well, the AFR 100 has um, generated a lot of momentum already. So a lot of key decision makers are here. They're coming together here. <clears throat> it's important that um, we can help the AFR 100 and similar regional initiatives to be visible and to be seen as a contribution of a region, in this case Africa, to the Sustainable Development Goals and to make that bridge between the public funding that flows into this initiative and the private finance that UN Environment, other actors are un unlocking to flow into landscape restoration. That's my specific um, role in my job with UN Environment, not as the chair of the partnership, but for UN Environment to work with my team on unlocking private finance and how to generate these estimated 30 to 50 billion dollars that are needed for the global restoration commitments. That cannot come from public sources alone. So speaking of finance, um, where are we today? How big is that gap? in terms of getting it to the uh, country partners that need it to implement AFR 100? So we've estimated together with FAO and other partners that around 30 to 50 billion dollars are needed to get us to the Bond Challenge restoration commitment. That sounds like a lot of money, but keep in mind that the Europeans spend more than that on pet food every year, yeah. so it's uh, not that much in the large scheme of things, but we know that no country in the world will be able to uh, give that much to restoration alone out of public sources. So we need to invest the limited public money to unlock other financial commitments, other resources, and together we can, we can come up with this amount. We had a similar challenge with renewable energy about 10 years ago where there was a lack of private investment into wind, solar, hydropower, so we helped the private sector overcome the initial perceived risks with public money and now it has taken off. Uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you.